Hi everybody, my name is Matt Morgan. I live in Sully. I work as a doctor in the intensive care unit in Cardiff, but I've also been doing some writing over the last few years, having uh, published my first book uh, a year or so ago called Critical, the science and stories from the brink of life. So I thought I'd give you a sneak preview into book number two, which is gonna be called How Kissing a Frog Can Save Your Life. And this really talks about how understanding the way that animals and their bodies work can help us treat human disease. So for example, how can understanding the way a kangaroo uh, produces its young help us understand the process of IVF? And that's the sneak preview I'm gonna read for you for your advent treat for today. Uh, so this is called, this chapter is called How to Make a Baby Kangaroo Style and it explores the kangaroo's reproductive system. And I thought what better way at Christmas time to tell you about a different form of virgin birth, not that of uh, Jesus, but that of one of the first cases of fertilization uh, outside of the human body. So here we go, here's a sneak preview that uh, nobody else has heard. Imagine being the first person to actually see the creation of human life. No musk of youth, no one else even in the room. Not lonely, but alone. The Latvian-born Miram Menkin was a highly educated lab technician working at the Free Hospital for Women in Boston, Massachusetts in 1938. She was also the first person to fertilize a human egg outside of the body a mother creator of a new kind. Her weekly lab routine had remained consistent for six years. She carefully selected eggs the size of a full stop from the ovaries removed during routine operations each Tuesday. On Wednesdays, she would add a cloud of sperm to the edge of the eggs in a glass bottomed dish. Thursday was a day of hope and prayers before she peered down her microscope on Fridays to see if life had been made. Six years, every week, the same outcome. Nothing happened. Yet one week, her familiar pattern fractured for the first time. After a change in theatre schedule, it was on a Thursday that Menkin selected an egg from a 38-year-old woman with four children whose uterus had prolapsed. It had been a tough week of sleepless nights for Menkin because her eight-month-old daughter had started teething. Through the sticky fog of insomnia, Menkin made an error. She normally mixed together the sperm and egg for just 30 minutes, yet she was so exhausted and drowsy that whilst watching under the microscope how the sperm were frolicking around the egg, I forgot to look at the clock until I suddenly realised that a whole hour had elapsed. Coming back to the lab on a quiet Boston Sunday morning on the 6th of February, 1944, she glimpsed something that no one else had ever seen. Early human life, shimmering through the bottom of a glass container, two into one. It's beautiful to think that thanks to the challenges of caring for a young baby, millions of others can now become parents and live through those same struggles. But why the gap of 30 years from that day until Louise Brown became the world's first IVF baby? The spark plug of life was never going to be enough without somewhere for the early embryo to shelter. Life needed to live back within the body, but achieving this process of implantation and shelter was hard. It was hard until we understood how the kangaroo does it. So that's just a sneak preview, a few paragraphs from this particular chapter uh, of this book, which hopefully will be out in 2021. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank you for asking me to do this, and I hope you stay safe.
Isolation's been key in pubs we can't see. The months have passed, there's new lockdowns beginning. Dreams of living, dreams of life, dreams of going out with the wife. Covid time, homeschooling and wine. in the kitchen and Joe Wicks on TV Who would have thought our 2020 would be A time for living A time for believing A time for Amazon delivery receiving Clapping rainbows Zoom calls and foreign rolls Nights from making fun in the kitchen Joe Wicks on TV Who would have thought at 2020 you would be Time for forgetting, time for giving and forgetting. Christmas is love, Christmas is peace.